Shalom, this is Nizama Shal Hamanabar Yasharal on my channel, Nizama the Hebrew Mystic Healer. I like to show a little love and support to my 3D kin, the 12 tribes of Israel scattered to the four corners of this 3D earth realm. Shalom, much love to you all. Also to my cosmic kin, those of you scattered to the 12 dimensions of this universal egg matrix. Love and shalom to you as well. And also I'd like to show some appreciation to my viewers, especially those subscribed to my channel. If you are not yet subscribed, please do so now and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the cool material coming up. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to identify false light beings. What are false light beings and what is their agenda? How do we identify them based on what they're teaching and what they're saying and what they're trying to encourage us to do while we are incarnated on this earth at this time? A false light being in a nutshell is a being that projects a false light or a fractuated light or a light that is not of source. It's not of the divine spark. They also can be identified by beings that will claim to be light focused or polarized within the light spectrum, but yet what they teach or what they encourage actually keeps us at a low vibration. So they're essentially wolves in sheep's clothing, claiming to be for our, our highest good, but really they're trying to keep us trapped in this particular dimensional space. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over all the ways that we can identify these beings. So anytime you listen to a message that was channeled, any kind of intuitive message, think about this, think about this modality, sift through it, look at what the message is, what's being said, and you should be able to find out, okay, who is really being channeled in this message? Now, I'm not saying that a lot of people will channel their higher selves, a lot of people will channel their own soul group, it's less likely to be affected in that same way, but we all have filters, including our own ego, and we all have we all filter messages through our own perceptions as well. So sometimes that can be a factor. But in general, any being can be affected, infected, or influenced by your conic beings. This started during the time of the fall of Atlantis. Actually, a little before the fall of Atlantis, but I digress. So the point being is you know, none of the, the so-called beings that are being channeled, none of the messages are, you know, just completely um, free of any kind of outside influence or any kind of filter. So it's always important for us to filter through messages that we hear. So again, I'm not discouraging anyone from listening to channeled messages. I mean, I myself am a channeler, but I also will check with myself and what I hear, even within my higher self and my own soul group to make sure there isn't any kind of arconic influence going on from the external. And it's important for us to look at things like this and really analyze from this perspective because it keeps us safe, it keeps us sovereign, and it keeps us focused on and on that path of ascension. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there as a quick disclaimer that I'm not speaking against um, channelers and psychics or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, use, use your own judgment, use your own intuition when you decide what to take and what to leave, what resonates and what doesn't with these messages. So these identifying factors should help. So the first thing that these false light beings will do is they'll promise salvation but never deliver. And when the time comes for them to appear, they change the context of the message. So e.g. a false light being when prophesied or channeled might say, oh, on such and such date, the earth will ascend and we will come and help. But then nothing happens, so they'll change the context from literal to spiritual. You know, everyone thought that things were going to happen in 2012. Um, people, you know, were, there's a lot of channeling going on where they thought, you know, like beings, extra dimensional beings and aliens and stuff are just going to show up. And when that didn't happen, all of a sudden the context got changed. So, oh, this is a spiritual ascension process and awakening process. So I'm just using that as an example. Now, I'm not saying that, that, that all channelers were talking about that. But that's just an example of those who were, were definitely being influenced, whether they knew it or not, by arconic beings. 
the, you know, the religions that are focused on the savior model or savior program have been influenced or infected by archonic beings. So the point is of this deception is to keep us waiting on external forces instead of looking within and recognizing our own divine sovereignty as expression of the one source creator. Many religions are a shining blind light example of this deception. So another thing they do is they teach us that knowing thyself is evil. They discourage us from self-discovery. This is especially the case in false light religions, which place the focus on the external. So a being that we're worshiping or a being that demands to be worshiped or a being that demands sacrifice or a being that does, demands that you need a medium or some kind of savior. This can also be a teacher like a guru or a priest or a priestess or a pastor. These are all examples of that. So they don't want us to go within, they want us to look at them. They want us to go through them, which is not the way back to source. That's a deception, keeps us in 3D. They discourage us from meditation and astral projection. Why? Because it further disempowers us. It keeps us in ignorance and it keeps us dependent on them. We don't know how to navigate the map and so we need a guide, right? This is especially true when it comes to the false light religions. Mainstream Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, for example, but all these religions really do this. They discourage meditation, astral travel as being evil or of the devil. It's because these particular tools will strengthen us, unlock our access to our higher divine selves, and teach us how to navigate the fourth dimension after death so that we can leave the 3D matrix instead of going in to the light, quote unquote. They can't let this happen because then no one would be here to power their 3D matrix system. They encourage us to go into the light upon death so that we can keep reincarnating in order to keep the 3D matrix running. Now, I'm not saying that the reincarnation cycle only applies to 3D or that they hack the entire reincarnation cycle, but they do have control of the reincarnation cycle at this level and in some cases all the way up to 5D. So I just wanted to go ahead and make that clear. So I'm not saying that um, they are in charge of the karmic laws or anything like that. They're manipulating the karmic laws, the universal laws, to try to keep us here. If they can convince us that we still have more work to do, then we'll keep signing contracts and we'll keep coming down here. Why? Because our divine spark, again, they don't have their own divine spark anymore. Their divine spark is severely diminished, so they have to parasite off of us in order to get it. These beings will pretend to be angels passed on loved ones, gods, saints, even demons in order to convince us that when we die, that we need to go into the light. They will promise heaven, but in actuality, it's a processing center for your soul. Well, you'll again have to sign a contract. Then your memories wiped so that you won't know what you did or, or who you were from the previous life and then you recycle back into another body. So it's a lie that a lot of these people say that we choose to come here and forget. We don't choose to come here and forget. That's been happening since the fall of Atlantis. It wasn't initially a choice, it was a deception. Now there are some of us that come down here from higher realms and we chose to come here to help there are even some of us that did that a long time ago and then got stuck in here and are still down here but it doesn't mean that we just choose to keep reincarnating in 3d over and over again we get manipulated into that because our memories are ripe. that's why it's so important for us to remember who we are to activate our cosmic dna while we're in the body that way if even if we don't physically ascend out of here while we're alive, that way after we die, we know who we are. We don't get trapped. We don't get, you know, suckered into coming back here, so to speak. So, again, you know, they want to try to convince us that we have to go back into the light and that, you know, we need to lose our memory in order to learn this is not true. In fact... Accessing memories and awakening to our cosmic tree as a way out of the prison will lead us to our oversoul selves and eventually to complete genetic light code activation, which will lead to the ascension of our entire being out of here. So that's another part of the deception. They want to claim these false light beings that we're ascending while we're still physically here. So again, being linked to the promise of salvation, but never delivering. Now we can be on the ascension path and still be in 3D, but we have not ascended if we're still in 3D, period. Because when we ascend, we won't be in 3D. We'll either, we'll either uh, leave our body, right, through death, 
or we will actually translate to a higher dimension and in a light Merkaba, like a lot of the old ancient prophets and seers used to. Example of this would be like an Enoch, um, Yeshaya, who was the Essene that many people mistakenly call Jesus Christ and, and put onto him as a human sacrifice, which he was not, but he did teach the ascension path. So him, Enoch, Elijah, these are examples of those who actually translated out of here, ascended out. We can do it too. Ascension is more than awakening and having access to higher realms. We can be on the ascension path and have access to higher realms, but until we are out of here in the physical 3D sense of the world, then we are not ascended, period. It, we wouldn't physically be here if that were the case. So the prison guards, you know, these are conic false light beings. They don't care if we know we're in a prison. They care if we escape the prison. So, you know, yes, it's better to be aware that you're in the prison because then you can work on an escape. But as long as you stay in the prison, it really doesn't matter to them. And so that's why they try to keep us trapped here in the karmic cycle so that we keep coming back and that we don't figure out what's going on. Um, they will also keep us trapped in the duality construct of all love or all light. I mean, excuse me, all light or all dark. They don't even care what side you're on as long as you keep playing that duality game back and forth, back and forth on a continual loop. I have to help the light. I am part of the dark. I am this, I am that. Instead of really understanding the wholeness Instead of traveling within our own inner shadow to pull out our inner light, they want us either focused on the dark or, you know, or focused on false light outside of ourselves. So they will play both sides of the coin. They are usually polarized all dark or all light, left or right, not the so-called middle path. So again, goal is to keep us from going within, to pull out our own inner light from our own shadow. So the solution is, is literally to do everything that they try to prevent us from doing. Meditation, empty meditation is the way within. Shadow work will help us heal and merge our darkness and our light to pull out our inner light. Past life regression helps us remember who we are. DNA activation, developing and recognizing the sovereignty of ourselves and respecting the sovereignty of others. Astral projection, safely and mindfully, of course, will give us access to these other realms so that we can map them out while we are still alive in 3D so that when we pass on, we can navigate it and don't just blindly go into the false light portal and be just reincarnated back in. So as above, so below, as then so without, knowing who we are, accessing our healing, our 3D and cosmic trees going back to source is the way back to source, is the way out of this 3D matrix, and actually is the path out of samsara or this entire universal matrix in general. Knowing our divine nature going back to the one source creator and traveling that inner labyrinth to find our true inner light instead of being deceived by the false light show. We balance our inner polarity and currents and become one. We are each the path back to our own true source via our individual cosmic trees. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was clear for you and enlightening. As I always say, take what resonates, leave the rest. Just like with mine and with everybody you listen to. And this is, this is ultimately your journey. You are your own sovereign creator. And you have to awaken to your own sovereignty as a creator in your own cosmic tree from within. That is the path back to source, which we are all contained within and an extension of. And with that, I'll say Shalom, take care, and stay tuned for the next video.